The French have stormed the ballot box, and like a revolution, the next president of France, he or she, well, they will have no roots in mainstream politics. And the outgoing president, already a relic of the republic, is warning his country and Europe of the poison of Le Pen. I'm Brent Goff in Berlin. This is The Day. The far right would deeply divide France. It would undermine our liberty. What's at stake is our conception of France and the unity of our nation. There is a clear choice. I will vote for Emmanuel Macron. Je voterai Emmanuel Macron. Uh, he is embodying uh, a new vision of French politics, the new face of French politics. Since yesterday, you know that the right and the left are two old concepts belonging to the former French politics and that we are creating something new. I'm the people's candidate. I'm here to defend the French people. Mr. Macron is not a patriot in any way at all. He says there's no such thing as French culture. He's a hysterical, radical Europeanist. Also tonight, a new report on anti-Semitism here in Germany. I'll ask one of the authors of that report what is working to erase the hate and what continues to help the hate. That's coming up in about 12 minutes. We begin the day in what already feels like a France nouveau. Yesterday's presidential election, the first of two rounds, was the coup de grace for all the forces that reject the political establishment of the past 60 years. Socialists and conservatives are now somewhat passé. The next French president will take office with no ties to the centrist parties of the left or the right. In fact, the EU and business-friendly candidate Emmanuel Macron, he has no party. He'll take on the leader of the far-right Front National, Marine Le Pen. Now, hers is the most radical of platforms, a promise to leave NATO, the Euro, and the European Union. She says that after Brexit, there should be Frexit. Well, the choice is for the French people either way, represent a dramatic departure within the Fifth Republic. A rendezvous with a new destiny is now just two weeks away. The future of Europe and those transatlantic ties, they are all hanging in the balance. Here's our first report. The day after his first round win, Emmanuel Macron had a hard time even getting out the house. He was greeted by dozens of supporters, handshakes and selfie takers. The 39-year-old is the clear favourite to win the presidency in two weeks' time, and he has the goal firmly within his sights. I hope to become the president of all the people of France, the president of patriots against the threat of nationalists. A glance at France's newspapers suggests the race is already won. Just one more step, the Liberation writes. The right are already out, says the Figaro. Macron has the firm backing of France's establishment, President Hollande, Prime Minister Cazeneuve, as well as EU institutions. But Marine Le Pen, the face of the far-right Front National, is trying to show she's not yet eliminated. She was out in full campaign mode on Monday morning, saying Macron had no strategy to protect the country against terrorism and that he stood for everything that's wrong with France. Macron is returnism. He's the return to all the old glory of French politics that has been responsible for landing the French people in the very difficult situation they are in today. Le Pen will no doubt continue her campaign against the so-called elites in the coming days, for never before in a French election have there been so few votes for the established parties. Conservative candidate François Fillon came in third. 
while Benoit Amand, the ruling socialist, came in a humiliating fifth place. I think the French people want change. They want to turn the page on the last 60 years on this right-left divide. I don't mind having a young president, but we need with it a platform that can stay the course. Today we find ourselves with Macron, who comes from who knows where, and with an extremist who can effectively cause fear. I don't think Le Pen will win the runoff, but I don't know what to think of Macron. An extremist and a centrist. French voters have two weeks before they need to decide between them. Macron is ahead right now, but two weeks is a long time in politics. Well, a French hashtag translating to without me on May 7th. Well, it trended on social media today. Supporters of left-wing candidate Jean-Luc Mélenchon sounding like Bernie Sanders supporters say they simply won't vote in two weeks. Now, here's one disenchanted supporter saying, I wanted to vote for Mélenchon in the second round, but I'd rather delegitimize the winner. No lesser evil, abstention. But those plans have critics as well. Without me on May 7th is the hashtag by children that are upset, capricious, and incapable of showing some maturity. Sad call for abstention. Meanwhile, an old hashtag has been making a big comeback. Now, take a look at this, but from some rather unusual suspects. It's Hillary Clinton's old campaign slogan, I'm with her. But this time around, it's Trump fans using that famous line to cheer on the French right-winger Marine Le Pen. Here she is, painted as a Joan of Arc, retweeted dozens of times from an account called Democrats for Trump. Now, here's one more example from an account called Trump the Left. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm with her. Best of luck to France and Marine Le Pen. Strange, strange pairings you see there um, in this election. Pascal Thibault joins me now. He is the Berlin correspondent with Radio France Internationale. Pascal, it's good to have you here at the big table. The, let's talk about the mainstream, the centrist parties, first of all. Um, they did not even come close, really, to making it to the, the final round. Are they now history? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, probably Fillon is history. He already, more or less today, recognized... Uh, uh, his defeat and he won't be the leader of uh, his movement of his party for the next parliament elections in June. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think there will be a more or less strong uh, parliamentary group of these uh, conservative party in the next uh, in the next assembly in June. And well, we will see. So we have elections then, right? We have elections in June and, it, and these elections are more important than in the past because it will be probably very difficult for the new president, for Le Pen or for Macron, mm -hmm. to find a majority in these assemblies. So probably they uh, have to build a coalition like in Germany or in other countries, which is in France something new. Which is something new and something very difficult, and it makes keeping your promises very difficult as well. Let's talk about the two finalists. Emmanuel Macron, today, the first thing he did was participate in a reef laying ceremony to commemorate the Armenian genocide. Now, explain to our global audience, Pascal, what in the world was Emmanuel Macron thinking? Why, why did he do that? We have a big Armenian minority in France. So um, maybe I could imagine maybe it's uh, also a gesture to, to this minority to find some more voters. Uh, I mean, it's also a, probably I could imagine also to to show the um, the significance of history after uh, it's an interpretation after Marine Le Pen uh, two or three weeks ago uh, told something normally his father would have said in the past about the non-responsibility of France in the deportation of Jews in the during during the Holocaust right. under the the German occupation. And uh, so, and it was an older genocide. So, 
Maybe, okay. maybe there is a link, but I, it's only my interpretation. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we thought it was interesting, too, that this would be the thing that he did today. We were also wondering if maybe he was trying to also show that he has um, diplomatic muscle or he's willing to show it towards Turkey. Turkey, of right? course, yeah. Um, what about Marine Le Pen today? She immediately went on the offensive and started attacking Mr. Macron. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely logical from, a, from her point of view. She has to... Uh, she has to show that he is the product of the establishment of the system, that, that he is um, more or less uh, the man of François Hollande, and that means he will, uh, he will do in the, pa in the future the same politic uh, Hollande <clears throat> did or did not or failed to do uh, f during five years. And uh, that's her uh, strategy. And she wants to show she is the only one who, um, who is the symbol of, um, yeah, of, of a new France, of new solution, of in a political innovation. Yeah. And Macron is not, she has to show that Macron is not the newcomer he want to, uh, he want to be. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be, I, I imagine that's going to be very difficult um, for her to do, n no matter which um, story she puts together about him. But th these stories, these narratives have come, um, have done very well with the country's young voters. If we look at the demographics of this election, you're seeing a lot of 18 to 25-year-old voters who said they liked Marine Le Pen. They voted for her and the Front National. What does that say about the future of France in Europe? And why, you know, we haven't seen that phenomenon. We haven't seen that in Brexit country. We haven't seen that in Trump country either. Um, but here it is in France. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's danger for the, for the future because uh, the new generation is the one who will be in charge um, in the future, logically. And, uh, and it showed uh, quite a large evolution and how, how big uh, or, or how strong the, the reject of the, the traditional parties is among uh, younger people. And they don't so, feel European either. That's what they at least are I saying. I mean, these young people, I think France is, a, there are two fronts and there are also two fronts between younger people. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are, you have the younger people, uh, one, 25% uh, of them are unemployed. <clears throat> um, they, they have no hope and uh, they don't uh, think the, um, the traditional politicians will or can offer them a solutions. And you have also other younger people studying through Erasmus, traveling through Europe, and they didn't vote, these younger people, for um, Mélenchon or so von Le Pen, but this, probably for this, Macron. It's this urban-rural yeah, um, split that that's we're one of the Yeah, <clears throat> that's one of the fracture in France, yeah. Right. The future of the European Union will be decided in two weeks. Do you agree with that statement? Yeah, that's true. That's absolutely true. I, I mean, especially after the Brexit, and uh, it would be a catastrophe for Germany if uh, Berlin... Uh, would lose uh, the major partner um, the country traditionally had in the last uh, 60 or 70 years. Yeah. And we always uh, saw that every new step in the European integration came through, um, uh, through Berlin and Paris. Yeah. And uh, without uh, or with, with, with France, uh, with uh, Marine Le Pen as a president, uh, it would be practically the end of the European Union. Yeah, it's going to be a very exciting next two weeks, that's for sure. Pascal Thibault with Radio France Internationale. Pascal, thank you very much. We appreciate you being on the day. Thank you.